Robert Daly is director of the Kissinger Institute on China and the United States. He joins us today to discuss the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, an initiative started in October of 2014. Let's start with the fundamentals. What, what was it intended to do? What's the vision? Well, AIIB is an attempt to meet the tremendous infrastructure investment needs of the Asia Pacific region. Uh, and that, this is estimated uh, through the next 20 years at about $8 trillion. So a number that greatly exceeds the capacity of the IMF, the World Bank, and the ADB combined. That's the nominal reason, and it's one of the real reasons for founding the bank. Another, obviously, this is China's big way of stepping out on the stage as an institution builder, and therefore as a rule maker and a shaper of order. And it's reasonable enough to assume that it's interested in doing this uh, in ways that suit China's goals. What are the implications for this, for the competition between the world's two largest economies? Well, between the economies, I would think not so much. It's really a question of whether the United States or China plays a or the leading role in shaping international norms going forward. Those are the terms of the conversation. And Washington seems to have decided that this is a threat to the Bretton Woods institutions in which the United States played the leading role, the World Bank and the IMF in particular. Critics of the U.S. response say that it's Cold War-like, uh, viewing it as a threat because it comes from the other guy, that you can't beat something with nothing, that just saying no is not a winning proposition. What, what is your analysis? Well, I would put the, the Cold War analysis aside because we're really talking about history unscrolling going forward. Mm -hmm. China likes to use the Cold War critique. Uh, I don't think it works as effectively as they'd like. But yes, I think that to date, the expression of America's concerns has been rather disastrous and has had the effect of isolating not China, but the United States. It is legitimate to worry about governance, transparency, and standards for things like environmental and human rights standards, particularly because when we look at China's domestic situation and we look at the way it treats these issues domestically, we and most of the world does not want those standards to be the standards for international institutions. Nevertheless, the capacity is there, and we cannot, on the one hand, tell China, as President Obama did last year, that it is a free rider, and on the other hand, hit it with suspicions about its future actions any time it steps out to provide public goods, mm -hmm. as it is in this case. Furthermore, if we want to assure high standards, and we should, the best way to do that is by being welcoming, by being involved, and not having what seems like a, a, a very nearly paranoid and frankly at times small-minded and short-sighted approach to Chinese institution building. Is that uh, that short-sightedness or small-mindedness as it might be characterized, is, is that a function of this just not being a priority for this administration or this Congress, or is there something deeper? Well, Congress does play a role, and one of the issues uh, that Beijing and others have raised is that China may have been forced to do this because Congress has blocked IMF a proposal reforms. which would have made uh, given China a bigger say in the IMF and the World Bank. Now, that is true, and that is a failure of Congress and therefore of American policy. At the same time, I think China would have gone ahead and done this anyway. The suggestion that it's perfectly happy to play on the existing chessboard is probably false. They would have done this for their own reasons anyway, reasons that are coherent. We might have done the same thing under, under those circumstances. Another way that Congress enters in is that even if the White House had taken a different approach and had wanted to participate for the reasons I've described, Congress probably would not have approved the allocation of funds for the United States to be a founding member. Still, to have been welcoming and to have asked for something like observer status. Offer friendly advice, something sure, like that. Sure, we could have had a, a hand in shaping it. And in fact, we're walking this back a little bit. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew has now said that the Asian Development Bank, the IMF, and the World Bank could partner with the AIIB. And that's another way of exercising influence. So, so the, you, I want to go back to the thing you said about concerns about uh, negative impact on good governance. Right. How, how might that play out? What is the concern? Well, the concern is that uh, China will use its lending uh, in fact, to create more job opportunities for Chinese and Chinese companies, that it will not be balanced so buying to things like bidding for processes. Companies. Right. You're sending, China has a lot of excess capacity, cement, steel, roads, airports. It's built up an enormous capacity over the past several decades. It's overbuilt in China, so you can relieve those pressures by sending uh, Chinese teams and crews outward, and in a way that is perhaps unfair, not transparent, and that does not uh, recognize international best practices. For example, there's a proposition now for a massive new canal built across Nicaragua. I believe it will be, have about twice the capacity of even the expanded Panama Canal. And a Chinese businessman registered in Hong Kong would appear to be the, the guy who's going to do this. Now, it's very hard to believe that the Chinese government isn't behind something so big. And this Chinese company 
is, has not honored international best practices for uh, environmental impact statements in particular. It's not clear what this company is, where its expertise is, and yet it's proceeding. That kind of lack of transparency is not something that we want to see either in Asia Pacific or, or anywhere for that matter. So our concerns are very serious concerns. They're just a better way of coming at them. So elaborate on what that better way is. What would be the next step for the United States if it wanted to engage in we a more would, productive manner? Not only would we participate initially as an observer, we would more actively partner through existing institutions. We could welcome China's institution building when it doesn't violate essential principles and encourage more of our allies to get involved because our allies have more mm -hmm. or less the same sense of best practices that we do. So when they are involved as one of the, uh, right now we have 30 accepted founding members, 47 applications, they will be able to see to a considerable degree behind the curtain the way that this stuff mm -hmm. is run by China and they're free to pull out and withdraw. So they have leverage we should have that leverage too. Instead, we have in effect isolated ourselves. If you're not at, at the table, time. you can't influence the, the right. game. A uh, final question about the big picture of the balance of soft power. How does this affect that balance of soft power between China and the United States? Well, right now there's a, there's a gross imbalance. The United States exercises far more soft power or attractive That's power That's probably than the China better way does. to ask it. How does it affect the imbalance? The imbalance. But economic power is part of attractive power. Mm -hmm. Dollars count, capacity counts, sure. and here I think you have to say score one for China, uh, especially because in their public statements about the AIB, they have not been mocking or dismissive of the United States. They've played it in an uncharacteristically big-spirited way, saying that the time may come, almost pitying of the United States being outside, mm -hmm. uh, in a way that they usually handle, they usually handle this sort of thing in ham-handed ways. Mm -hmm. They've played this one about right. Well, interesting. Well, we'll revisit it as all these are ongoing developments. Look forward to it. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.